Okay, we're looking at energy systems and the syllabus says that you guys need to learn about the alact acid system, which is the ATP phosphocreatine system, the lactic acid system, and you also have to learn about the aerobic energy system. The learn to for the syllabus asks you to analyse each energy system in terms of its source of fuel, the efficiency of which it produces ATP, the duration that the system can operate, the cause of fatigue, the byproducts of energy production, and the process and rate of recovery. In order to understand energy systems, you need to understand ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. ATP is the only form in which our body can use energy. Our body takes the energy from the last bond between the two phosphate molecules and converts it from chemical energy into physical energy. This results in ADP being produced. ADP needs to be converted back into ATP for our body to be able to use it for energy again. And so each energy system finds a way to attach one phosphate molecule back to ADP to make ATP again, ready for our body to move. The three energy systems can be broken into two groups. They can be either aerobic or anaerobic in the way that they produce ATP. In the alact acid ATP phosphocreatine system, the source of fuel is creatine phosphate, its efficiency in producing ATP is very fast, but it's limited to only being 8 to 12 seconds in duration. The depletion of phosphocreatine ATP is the cause of fatigue. Heat is its main and only byproduct. And the phosphocreatine needs to be restored as its process for recovery, which takes 30 seconds to 2 minutes as the rate of recovery. The lactic acid energy system has glycogen as its only source of fuel. It's very efficient in terms of its ATP production, but only lasts 30 seconds to 3 minutes. The hydrogen ion buildup is the main cause of fatigue. The byproduct is pyruvic acid. The process of recovery is, involves the removal of pyruvic acid, and this can take 30 to 60 minutes in terms of the rate of recovery. The aerobic energy system uses glycogen and fats as its main source of fuel, but can also use protein. It produces ATP at a slower rate than the anaerobic systems, but can continue for a very long period of time. The main cause of fatigue occurs when the system shifts from using glycogen to using fats as its source of fuel. The main byproducts are water and carbon dioxide. And the process of recovery is about the restoration of fuel and the removal of waste. The rate at which that occurs is 24 to 48 hours. In sport, the alac acid energy system is used for first movements and movements of high intensity. The lactic acid system is used for repeated high intensities and prolonged high intensities. The aerobic energy system provides the base for all aerobic sports, is used for prolonged movements, is used for moderate intensities, and is also used to allow the anaerobic energy systems time to recover. This information is depicted in the graph just here below. Here you'll see that the ATP stores are used first by the ATP phosphocreatine or alact acid system. You see that it drops off quickly and the ATP phosphocreatine system kicks in as the phosphocreatine starts to replenish those ATP stores. But again, this only lasts to around the 10 second mark. The lactic acid energy system can be seen as it slowly picks up and starts to produce the majority of the ATP once we pass the 10 second mark. But again, it will only last one to three minutes in length of time before it quickly fatigues and ATP needs to be produced by the aerobic system. The aerobic system takes longer to kick in. As you'll see, it takes up to one to three minutes for the aerobic system to reach its potential where it's producing ATP as quickly as it can. During that time, it then becomes the predominant ATP producer and the ATP phosphocreatine system or the alac acid system and the lactic acid system only get used when the intensity uh, needs to go above the 80% mark, which is above the anaerobic threshold. So whenever you're doing a sport or participating and your intensity goes above the anaerobic threshold, that is when your body requ is required to use the anaerobic energy systems to produce the ATP so that it has enough ATP to cater for those higher intensities. But again, those higher intensities cannot be maintained for very long as fatigue will set in quickly with those anaerobic systems and the aerobic system will then allow it to recover and to replenish, uh, remove the lactic acid and replenish the phosphocreatine stores ready to be used again. 
Repeated bursts close together uh, will require you to use a lactic acid system because your phosphate creatine system uh, won't quite uh, recover fast enough or when it does it will only last a shorter period of time. Same with the lactic acid system, if it hasn't had time to fully recover it won't last as long as it would when you first used it. So the aerobic energy system not only provides the majority of ATP for all aerobic performances but in particular sport whenever you're doing any kind of um, aerobic performance the aerobic system will also be producing and allowing uh, producing ATP and allowing for the anaerobic energy systems to be fully restored so that they can be used again later. So for example in a football match uh, you might be required to do a quick sprint for about 10 seconds which will use your ATP phosphate creatine system you then will stop, you might be jogging or walking or something during the game and that allows your phosphate creatine, your alic acid system to recover. However, if you have to do repeated levels of sprints or you have to do a prolonged sprint that lasts for about 30 seconds to a minute, then you're going to be using that lactic acid system. Again, once you switch down to jogging at a lower intensity, that's allowing your lactic acid system to recover for the uh, pyruvic acid and the hydrogen ions and stuff to be gotten rid of so that that system is ready to go again when you require it later on in the sport. So just to recap, we've covered the alact acid energy system, the lactic acid energy system, and the aerobic energy system in this video. If you want further information, please visit the website at pdhpe.net.